The KOV, reporting live from the airport. We're visiting another Serbian friend of mine and it's a collector with an opinion. We hope to learn all about his outspoken views and a thing or two about markets, supply and demand and marketing. This is the portrait of nickel trader Zoran Miljak. For this video I'm wearing a 1675-8, a gold Rolex GMT Monster with a beautiful aged nipple dial and a 7206 riveted oyster bracelet. Vintage watches from Amsterdam. Dobar dan. Nice to see you, brother. <laughs> Thank you You're for good? picking us up. All Thank good. You. How about you, my friend? All good. I heard nice, Nick, nice Nickel was at 31,000. Yeah, nickel, euro. Rock, uh, nickel rocket, okay? Flying to the moon. Let's go to a proper hotel now. Uh, ours is not good enough for you, huh? No, no, it's good. It's good. We like it. Let's go, bro. We go. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, my friend. Uh, I understand uh, the nickel pays for uh, both the hotel as well as the traveling and the watch collection. Yes, that's true. Nickel uh, is paying at the moment for everybody in my inner cycle. So, yeah. For how long have you been a nickel trader? 15 years. But we have to say, nickel price didn't explode because of the explosions in Eastern Europe. That was a cycle. We are in a metal super cycles super cycle so that was expected but not so fast of course where rockets are flying we are a little bit faster Saudi Arabia with oil and you only invest I in only nickel. I only trade in nickel you only trade in yes nickel. we have we we don't invest okay invest you you can invest in shares if you want if you drive a Tesla electric car <laughs> buy Tesla shares or we make a switch some people are investing in watches and why if you don't have, mind me asking, did you choose for nickel uh, as a base metal to, uh, that's a good to buy? That's a good question. We have six base metals. Let's start with copper. Copper is uh, is like a schlafpille, how you say in English? Sleeping pill. Yeah. It goes slow. Nickel has the hugest volatility. And now we know each other for a few few months, let's say. We, we met each other in Amsterdam. And uh, you should trade that what is... Uh, like your character what is similar <laughs> to your character I see and okay. you're an explosive guy no yeah I'm not a sleeping pill okay so Makes sense. the volatility from the nickel okay you can win you can lose but that's life I mean you you are a young guy but you do your job very professional what I saw in Amsterdam and you know how it is sometimes you're on the winning side sometimes you're on the losing side on the side but that's also losing. part of the excitement but that's okay you can't win every time. Perfect. Otherwise, it's too boring. Lit up your uh, signature cigarette. Yes. Uh, we were talking already a little bit about investments. We started off, of course, with uh, the nickel trade. How do you view people that buy watches as an investment? What do you think about that? You have, in my, my opinion, is you have two kind of people who are buying for an investment. Okay. But I would be more happy to see people to buy a watch because they want to have the watch. Probably this would be also your, your, your thing, because you can, uh, if you sell him a watch, you, you're selling not only, not only a watch because he wants this watch, because he saw it on Instagram that a soccer player has this watch, and then he's running to your store and saying, <laughs> listen, Jasper, I want a 5711 now. But yesterday he didn't know that uh, Patek Philippe had this watch. So we have no background. Your job, I was... Uh, when I was in your, your store the first time, you explained me, listen, this watch is this, this is this. You are a young guy, 
but you know a lot about watches. And if we have only people who are buying watches because of, yeah, tomorrow this watch will be 10K more or 100K more, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, where's your part? And I believe, like you, watches should be worn. Watches should be worn, yes, because watches are showing not only the time, mm -hmm. it shows much more. It shows the story of the life. It shows the story, yes. True. But if we're talking about story, yeah. I love Rolex also because they have a great history. Um, but you're not so fond of Rolex. No, Why is that? Are, look, maybe I was a fan of Rolex, like everyone from us, okay? When we've been kids, Rolex was, uh, yeah, that was a luxury brand, you know? Mm -hmm. You, uh, when you see someone wearing a Rolex, you say, wow, look, he's uh, top of the tops, okay? But today what is Rolex doing is not nice because Rolex is uh, maybe selling us a story that they don't have enough watches for the world. That's why uh, you find uh, on the gray market a Rolex Daytona in steel for 50,000 or 40,000 euro. But how is that different to Patek and you adore Patek? Good question. First, I don't adore Patek like the company, okay? I more adore Patek, the Patek team in London, which sold to me the first watch. Mm -hmm. So You started with what watch? With an Aconaut. 5167? Yes. It was in the display. Yeah. So we're talking about back in 2005, 10? 6. 2006. So very early. Yeah, 2006, 2007. But yeah, it was in the window. Okay, times changed. We have uh, a huge demand. When you go back 15 years, you have China, you have India. All those people want those watches as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't mention Russia today. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> and yeah, you have a you have a rising demand. We are to come back to Rolex now. When we talk about about Rolex, we talk about Submariner, Daytona. You, from your vintage watches side, okay, I know you see Rolex totally different and that's okay. Because when we go back in the times, Rolex is wow. You have a GMT in different versions. You have the dials, you have uh, Sultan dials. Aging of the, the, the watches. Aging of yeah. the dials, yes. And that's what makes you happy, let's say. But when we speak from Rolex today, is that when you go to the store, and you say or to their whatever authorized dealer and you say hi guys i would like to buy a gmt okay or i would like to buy a daytona i would like to buy a daytona for a present maybe my analyst has done a good job and i want to give him a bonus then the lady is saying to me yes uh, waiting list okay but when we see the the numbers rolex is producing 1.2 million 1.1 i don't know or, or only 1 million this is like you go to McDonald's and you say, listen, <laughs> I want to buy a Big Mac. No, really, I want to buy a Big Mac. And she say, yeah, okay, no problem, but it's waiting list. I mean, what the fuck waiting list? For me, Rolex is trying to control the gray market because Rolex is the only brand where you can buy for seven or 8,000 euro a really wow watch. A GMT yeah. Pepsi is not bad, to be honest. Uh, Daytona is not bad. I mean, they never hear about complications. Yeah. For, for Rolex, the most complicated watch is a Yachtmaster 2. Skydweller now? Skydweller now, yes. Yeah, and they had back in the days that Jean-Claude Killy? They had one, okay, yeah. but that was back in the days. Yeah. Back in the days, yeah, Sophia Loren was also, <laughs> wow, okay, but that was back in the days. Because also you had a vintage, I, I bought a vintage uh -huh. Daytona from you, the 6263 in gold. Mm -hmm. So you did have a couple of Rolex watches. True, and I don't, I'm look, I'm not... Uh, emotional connected to to this watch okay but with patek you also have it because you have a good connection with the people at bond street with the patek. people yes we went through times okay mm -hmm. because sometimes nickel is high sometimes nickel is low so sometimes you buy a watch sometimes you can't buy a watch and those people understand that so what is nice there they see you as a human hi how are you and you have a relationship now with them for 16 years. Yes. So therefore also you can get the 5711 Olive, right? Interesting story, yes. The, yeah, they offered me the watch and uh, I bought it, okay? Today, many people saying, I got it, okay? No, you didn't got it. 
You have to buy it still. You, you have buy, to pay. You pay it's not a present. Yeah. So I didn't. I I, I got nothing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I bought it, and uh, yeah, they showed me the respect because this watch cost twenty six thousand pounds. I think it was immediately on the market for four hundred thousand. But also what I think is that uh, I show to them my respect. Yeah, and they also know you won't flip the watch. So you're not going to sell it the next year for uh, 10 times the market, no. uh, 10 times the retail value. No. And I think they know that. Yeah. So that, that's okay. That's this relationship. Mm -hmm. you know. So besides Patek, you have more watches in your collection. We will uh, grab a couple of them. I have a, grab of, uh, I have a couple of them here. Mm -hmm. But something interesting is Zenit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm interested, like, what brands do you like and why do you like the brands or what does a model make it worthwhile to put in your c collection or to We can speak about it. Omega. Omega is doing, do, doing the complete process really well with their clients, with their collectors. No bullshit story, waiting list, no this, okay? I wanted to buy Omega 321. I was there, uh, at this time I was in Moscow, mm -hmm. is the capital where Putin is uh, now <laughs> is in the news. Is uh, I was there, so I wanted to buy uh, Ed White, mm -hmm. you know, the Ed White. Yeah. With the straight, and uh, the straight uh, looks. Yes, it's an interesting piece because of the caliber. And uh, they said to me, no problem, one watchmaker is making the caliber. Probably you will get it in three months, six months, nine months, but you will get it, okay? After three months I got a call and the watch was there. Okay. So that's fair, you know, you want something, you buy something. If they, but in the watch world today is not, you want something, you buy something. It's if they want to sell it to you. And that's not correct. Especially on those amounts. But what, what about Zenit then? You talked Zenit about Zenit? Zenit is really cool. I was, uh, two months ago, I was Middle East and I saw a Zenit boutique. So I entered the boutique. And then I saw the classic uh, El Primero Chrono, which they made, I don't know when. And this is wow, because this watch is, uh, if you put it on the wrist and you will do it later, mm -hmm. and you tell me what you see or what you feel. And it's a watch, it costs six and a half thousand euro. So for me, this is a I'll present. I'll grab the watches. Yeah, for me, this is a present uh, for all watch collectors. Be careful, there is one AP gold old we can call it vintage okay bought uh, in amsterdam at one of the best dealers i heard no really to be honest <laughs> one of the coolest dealers okay fucking young but a good knowledge and he knows how to present you the product and for me it was really really nice to buy yeah, let's say my first vintage watch from you. Thank you very much. And I this appreciate is this it. Watch. Yeah, so this is the perpetual calendar with Marc Piquet, Royal Oak. I believe the perpetual calendar is the most important complication in Royal Oak's it history. Is. It is. And of course, um, it's, it's one of the most cleanest dials without the tapisserie. This At this time, they were a little bit fucked up, uh, the watch <laughs> industry in, in Switzerland, because, uh, yes, yeah, some Japanese guys invented i think quartz yeah yeah so it was really hard for them to sell all these overpriced watches <laughs> since last week it was really really easy okay how how the situation in europe will affect uh, the watch industry and everything i don't know at the moment but this watch is a beautiful watch i wanted that watch you know what i love that i sold it to you like two three weeks ago and it's already totally scratched so that yeah, means you loved it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Im imagine, imagine. Uh, it's it's funny. Look, I was uh, you know in, I use Instagram to get information really quick, and there you see many people have many watches. Okay, and when you go to their pictures, and you zoom the pictures, you will see that they have no scratches. Okay, that's unbelievable. I mean, this is like you go. Let's say, imagine you buy this watch and you don't wear it, okay? Yeah. It's like you go to, I don't know how you're in Dutch, say, Hooker's house. You know? Well, we, we know what it is in yeah. uh, Amsterdam, believe okay. me. Yeah, the red, red, red light, light district. Yes, for example, you go there, you pay, and you, only, you only hug look. the lady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brother, and you only hug the lady. That's not working, <laughs> really. So. Bravo. And th this is what you see on Instagram. 
Okay, so we have the AP Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar. We have the AP Chronograph in steel with the white dial and, and the tapisserie. This mm. is the new watch. New watch, 50 years yeah. anniversary. Sharp like a, like a razor. Released a um, few days ago, weeks. Week ago, yeah. I think. Uh, so you also have good connection at AP to get this watch? No, I have good connection to one authorized uh, dealer, mm -hmm. okay, Bukhara. Yeah. Great history. One of the most well-known dealers in the world. Yes, great, uh, great history, great client service. Mm -hmm. I got an offer to buy this watch. I said, okay, come on. I bought from Jasper the gold one. I need maybe something in steel. It's yeah. nice. And you have the you have the champagne dial. You have a white dial. You have a tapisserie dial. You have the clean dial. It's, it's a good bad. combination. Good combination. Now enough uh, AP. Enough AP. This is the watch you bought yesterday. Did you just tell me that? This is wow. Br the Breguet. Mm. You bought it yesterday with the porcelain dial. Yes. Breguet numerals. Check the dial. Check the off-center sub dial. And check wow. the, the hands. You know what's super cool? The recess sub dial. That's like a I bathtub. Know, is, yeah. Because it's the porcelain dial. Like uh, it's like you go here on the terrace and uh, you look at the snow. Yeah. Of course, Breguet is outstanding quality. But why did you decide to buy this watch? Because it's pretty dressy compared to many other pieces in your collection. Yes. Look. You easy. When you start buying watches, when you're entering the world with watches, okay. You buy what you like, and you buy that what you feel, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we're speaking about, uh, about Patek, let's say, of course, when you are young, you are more in the sports models. So you look for an Aconaut, you look for an Autinus. When you get older, you get mature, okay? <laughs> By the way, with 43, you should be emotional mature. That it it will help you a lot, okay? It will help you a lot. So let's wait a little bit. When you get older, you will get interested. You are you look for other pieces. Mm -hmm. You don't need any more uh, an Nautilus. And then you bought the Road Time with Minutes Repeater. Oh yeah, that's wow. That's one of the craziest watches. Suits your lifestyle as you travel a lot. Totally, I jet guess. Set, so totally. wow. But that's a different kind of watch, you know. That's a different league. What do you think about now? All these young kids getting Nautilus, getting Aquanaut. Is, is is this what's ruining the brand now? Yes, totally. Five seven eleven became fashionable. Mm -hmm. Everything what is fashionable, forget it. Yeah, it doesn't last. It doesn't last. I think the company made a mistake, but. But it's therefore, maybe Stern also decided to uh, discontinue it, right? To stay in the gold league instead Look, of the steel it's league. It's not. We are not the company, okay? So whatever they do, they do it for a reason. Of course. And uh, I think it's okay to discontinue a five seven eleven because it's a old model, two thousand six, I think. We need a new caliber, maybe new material in the housing, a new name. That's fair. Uh, to make a green Nautilus, to hype the watch more, okay, it's his decision. But the funny thing was with the Tiffany dial, that was wow. Then we had this small Chinese guy, you know, bidding, no bidding, seeing Arnaud, working for Philips auction. Yeah, you have a particular opinion on Zachary Lou's yes. purchase of the six and a half million yeah. euro or yeah. dollar. I mean, it's okay if your father has enough money. Why not? Spend 65 million is good. If you like the watch... And it's tax deductible. It was sold for charity, right? Yeah, so it's sold for charity. Really wow. I'm uh, impressed. <laughs> leave the Nautiluses. Yes, I want to see Nautilus. more. Check I want to show the people more. If we you have want, the Zenit the here. Yeah, grab the Zenit. You can put it on your wrist. Maybe you need to take off uh, your golden Rolex. I don't downgrade, sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> no problem, no problem. It's a, but it's this is also recently purchased. Yes. This so how many watches do you buy? Hello. Like five watches a month? No, no. You can open a store by now. I Probably I could, yeah. You, have, you would have a better stock than the Patek and AP boutique. <laughs> probably we sure. could <laughs> do that, but we should enjoy in the watches. And you buy, if you like something, you buy. If you don't like, yeah. you don't buy. But the dial layout and this one is classic, but, but still, look, you know, this is cool. 
both the movement as well as the, the whole design is inspired by the 70s Zenith El Primero. Yes, the El Primero was, I think, the caliber when Rolex had no watchmakers. Well... I mean, still they have no watchmakers. <laughs> well, they bought Egler, so basically okay, they're yeah, wow. producing their own watches wow, now. Yeah. But they have good CNC machines. Greetings to Max Bernardini in Italy. <laughs> I like that, I like that. Now, the most weird watch in your collection, in my honest opinion, Yeah. But you have a story with it that you told me last time in Amsterdam. It's nice to tell the viewers. It's the Porsche design. How come this watch fits in your collection and do you think it's worth buying this watch? It's absolutely worth buying the watch because what is amazing, this is 1972, okay? Design. The re-edition. This yes. is the re-edition. That's the re-edition, yeah. yes. That's the re-edition, one of 50 for the GP race in uh, Tzel Am Zee. Yeah. So not St. Moritz, Tzel Am Zee. Different place, same watch. And uh, yeah, the design, for me, this is wow. Why, the blackened case? Like, like do you like uh, PVD no. coated stuff? Or? No, really no, okay. That's more George Bamford, mm -hmm. the gentleman from London. And, uh, but for me, this is wow. Look, it's 50 years old design. And but the same goes to say for the Zenit El Primero, the yes. same goes to say for your vintage Tetona in the end, you know? Yes, but this is looking really modern. But I think a watch like this, together in a collection with the Patek Philippe Road Time with a minute repeater, yeah. that's a weird combination. But I have also a Casio. Yeah, okay. I'm just trying to figure out what your mindset is about buying watches. Why do you prefer to buy this watch and, and why don't like this? that watch or the other way around? Usually I should buy what? Well, what I don't know, but it's now on Google. You know, I have a, a specific taste. Let's say okay. I, I have my style. I don't see you walking around in uh, shorts because that's Today not your no. style. Today, yeah, okay. Today, no. Yeah, okay. You can buy style. You, you can buy... Uh, you should buy when you feel something. Mm -hmm. okay? If this watch is talking to you or if, if your shorts are talking to you, <laughs> or you have the other ones with Balenciaga shoes. If the Balenciaga shoes are talking to you, okay, and saying, listen, listen, Jasper, buy me, I need, okay, the voices in your head, you should go for it. Is that a tip you want to give out to the collectors out there? Buy whatever the fuck you want, whatever buy the fuck you like? No, whatever you like, but mm -hmm. don't buy that what the neighbor is buying. Yeah. Because that's not you. But for example, do you... Uh, feel less attracted now to the 5711? Yes. Because of the hype? To be honest, yes. So without the hype, you would even enjoy it more? Yes, but here we have also a problem. You spend 26,000 pounds for a watch, but the people on the street, they think it's maybe one million worth, okay? They cut you the left arm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're they you're never afraid for that shit? Yes and no. Because you're Serbian also, so Thank you, you have some much. friends. N yeah, yeah. N no, eh? th th this was not nice. <laughs> you're joking. Because you, a, are Dutch, you, a, you, you are Dutch. You yeah. are also not easy. <laughs> we have the Irish people also not easy. <laughs> no, but yeah, of course we are afraid. Yeah. But uh, it shouldn't stop you from watch, enjoying you know? it. Yeah, give him yeah. the watch and he's okay. Yeah. Sometimes you feel much better when you wear an Apple Watch. Well, I fairly doubt it, but sure, a Casio no, you feel, would you feel you fine. You feel freedom, peace, mm -hmm. also in your mind. This mm -hmm. is too much, you know. The the complete watch world escalated. I feel you. That's uh, not normal that someone is offering you three, four hundred, five hundred thousand euro for a steel watch. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for all the insightful no opinions problem. and views. You're welcome. Is there anything more you'd like to share with us? Do I need to say something now? You can say whatever, uh, whatever you want, bro. I don't know. Look the camera deep into the eyes and say... Those two guys sitting there, <laughs> they're laughing. <laughs> You can say Kurcic, whatever you wish. No, no, that I uh, leave with you. You, <laughs> know, you know all the special for, uh, words because your friend uh, Serjan in, in, in Belgrade, Serbia, who is the huge Rolex collection from our kingdom, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, Stevanovic. Stevano, bravo, yeah. Dobro. This is like, uh, yeah, is wow. Anyways, thank you so much for uh, shooting no, this thank video. You. Uh, of course, we will see each other many more times in Amsterdam or in Serbia or yeah. wherever because you also stay a lot in Milan, etc. If I ever watch to sell, I bring it to you. Well, as long as it's not the weird PVD code, it's... Uh, I, I see, I, I didn't uh, woke up uh, many emotions. Uh, uh, no, it huh? doesn't do a lot to me. You driving an electric car. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, okay, fair play. Thank you so much, Zoran. I think we should quit here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, boss. Thank you very much. That, ni- that, that was not nice, eh, to say huh? that about the, the electric car. Which car you drive? The fucking small electric car. That's cool. Ah, that's cool. That's cool.